Phoebe, welcome back. Third time, let's see how well you do this time. You're gonna guess Hearthstone cards that are not super popular and honestly really hard to judge. So uh, this is gonna be your hardest challenge yet. I hand pick these cards for you to suffer. Your thoughts? All I'm gonna say is that if I get a, if I get anything less than a ten out of ten, I will never appear on this series ever again. <laughs> well, there, there's also a uh, eleven card, so oh, yeah, it's, an, it's impossible to get. So I guess regardless, you're uh, you're not coming back. Perfect, perfect <laughs> score, or I'm out of here forever. Okay, all right, you ready to go? Let's roll. This is your first card. Kaladin the Breaker, destroy a minion. If drawn this turn, instead destroy all minions except this one. Like we're talking about if Kaladin was drawn this turn, right? If you top deck it, its effect is the, the whole board clear instead of just one card or okay. one minion. There are like very, very few scenarios where like top decking this, uh, unless like people are just citing this in as like a tech card versus like an aggro, like a super aggro meta. Uh, it probably won't ever see play outside of exactly when aggro is running around and you're just like, ah, yes, I will kill it in on six and hope I will draw to kill it in on six and I will pray. But yeah, this card's probably terrible. Uh, okay, so I wouldn't call it terrible. It was probably like less than good, but it wasn't bad. It, it did see play. The The benefit of Warlock is that Warlock can draw a lot of cards with their hero power. Mm. So you're, you're basically drawing two cards a turn. On top of that, Warlock at the time did have ways to just shuffle their hand into the deck and then just redraw their hand. Oh yeah. So this this actually ended up being a lot better than people thought it was gonna be. Also a six bit of three, three, just destroy a minion. Sometimes are just pretty decent. All right, you ready for a spicy one? Let's, let's see it, let's see it. Four mana, 12, 12. Oh my God, flame re faceless. Eat your heart out. <laughs> Dormant, Dormant, battle cry. So when three, one, three enemy wardens, uh, when they die, destroy all minions and awaken. Oh wow. You So you remember what Dormant is, right? Yeah. Just, just to be clear. Keep you sleeping. Go. Uh, so the first idea that comes to mind is, uh, play Magtherion, uh, you summon a bunch of guys for your opponent, and, like, maybe you combo that on the same turn with, like, a spell-powered blizzard or something like that. Uh, the second idea that comes to mind is, again, uh, my favorite class, uh, aggro, uh, and just basically summoning this, like, turn four against aggro, and then, like, maybe just using a turn five, like, board clear, and then, like, you're honestly using that just for the the board nuke effect. But is this card good? Oh my god. I can't tell. It seems like it should be good. This is either like the most win more card of all time that you will immediately start to lose as soon as you resolve the effect. Or but even if you resolve it, it just gets like big game huntered or like any spot removal ever. I'm gonna say this card probably saw play it was probably like the the definition of like middle of the road like it was okay okay so first of all you called aggro a class which is just wrong <laughs> don't don't okay uh, okay <laughs> we don't talk about that uh second of all this card is actually like i would say it was pretty decent but like on average just did not see a lot of play the circumstances a lot of the time for this card just weren't needed there was just other stuff that could do the same thing but like just more efficient for other classes because you need to play this and then you need to have a way to actually deal with their one threes uh, the one things that you summon for them so it didn't see a lot of play but it wasn't a bad card okay. whatsoever yeah that's it's, it's very yeah that's definitely sort of what i was thinking in the sense where it seems like like it was probably like a like a it's probably self playing like its own right but there were probably just like a lot of issues with it in the sense where people experimented with it you probably remember your uh the paladin legend last time let's see how well you do on this one. Oh, it's her again uh yorel Battlecry, if your deck has no neutral cards, gain Rush, Lifesteal, Taunt, and Divine Shield. Uh, wow, this card looks bad. <laughs> Look, if you're telling me that my queen, the Countess, who adds three whole legendary minions to your hand is bad, how are you gonna tell me that? Wait, well, hold on, hold on. You gotta remember, you're playing a 7-7 seven, seven, do nothing to the board the same turn you're playing this card. Oh. This card actually does something with the board. Oh, Hold what on. you talking about? I got three cards! I gotta draw three cards! That's <laughs> crazy! Yeah, 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 yeah. So, the first thing that comes to mind is this kind of card kind of reminds me of, like, Ragnaros Lightlord, in the sense where, again, like, you kind of just have, like, on-demand healing. Was this card good? It's not good. <laughs> Pure Paladin is never good. <laughs> I have deluded myself over years of uh, self-gaslighting. Uh, this card is- uh, this is kind of just a question of whether or not Pure Paladin was ever good, and if my performance last time has indicated anything, and my self-delusions, uh, it probably wasn't. So, this card was probably the best card in Pure Paladin, but it was all but pure paladin wasn't good and that's my answer yeah that's pretty dead on let's go yeah that's pretty dead on i wouldn't say it was the best card 
there was actually like some pretty good cards in the pure paladin deck but generally speaking the biggest problem with this is just it's, it's not a game winning effect it would just clear a minion often and then that's all you really do with it uh what about this one sword eater damn you, you be munching taunt battle cry <laughs> equip a three two sword fiery war actually uh <laughs> and and that's taunt you forgot you've got the oh taunt. it's got taunt too oh my god this card is Oh my god, it's just fiery war axe on legs. Like, how do you go wrong with this? Two mana three two was too good. Four mana two five with a three two? Like, it's gotta be good. Like every control warrior is just like salivating at the at the thought of like munching on some swords. Alright, this card is probably really, really, really good. Yeah, this card was nuts. <laughs> actually, actually, like arguably one of the best cards warriors ever received. Uh people didn't think it was gonna be very good either. Actually, no, I can't remember. People thought it was gonna go be good, but they didn't think it was gonna be like broken like it was. It was played in like almost every single warrior deck just because of the fact of how good it actually was. All right, this is where the real stuff starts coming in. Let's see the this sauce. is all games. Okay, there you go. Far watch post, can attack. After your opponent draws a card, it costs one more up to 10. So like if you draw like a 10 mana card, like it's not gonna put it to like 11, right? No, it stays a ton. Okay, so this card is giving me two vibes. Either one, this card is absolutely useless and it sits as a river crocolisk that can not attack. Or you play this in the most frustrating control deck of all time and you just mana drain your opponent out and if they don't have a way to remove this like you basically win the game by just being a sociopath and sitting on this or two of them oh my god two of these guys it's card get two of them yes maybe this is maybe this is the greatest card of all time this probably saw a ton of play in just about every control deck at a point where again aggro wasn't like hyper relevant so yeah this card is probably insano banana mode uh this card was not insano banana mode. what uh but it was good it was good Mana. Uh, it was good so I'll, I'll give you the I'll give, I'll give you the story. I'll give you the story. So this card actually started with a two mana two four stat line. Oh. At two mana two four, disgusting. Like like you said, broke it. Like because you're the problem with this card came to be that your opponent literally couldn't answer it at four health because the breakpoint was so awkward. So quite literally, your opponent would just be falling behind the second you played this card because they would have to use two cards to kill this or two or two mm. turns basically to actually answer this and then your opponent will fall behind when this card was nerfed to three mana or three health which is the card i showed you um it saw less play uh, quite a bit because at three health the break point was a lot easier to actually deal with and most decks would be like you play this i kill it immediately and then you just played one card to uh make one of my cards cost one more mana and if you get two on the board it gets really juicy but for the most part, uh, it's probably just about average at the moment. At four, four health, though, yeah, you were completely right. The card was disgusting. All right, what about this card? Light Shower Elemental. Taunt Death Rattle. Restore eight health to all friendly characters. Damn, uh, Herbstone really given Priest uh, <laughs> whatever it needs, huh? Every day I wake up and I just look at a Priest card, and I'm like, this is probably going to be the most boring card on planet Earth. And this just proves to me that the theory is always correct. <laughs> Do you, there's no way you wake up like that every day. That's a fucking that's I, I a wake, string line. I wake up and I'm like, oh boy, I can't wait to read Power World Shield again <laughs> in my, in my collective memory. Oh boy, I can't, five mana, four, five, restore five health. Uh, priest cards. It's important for the game. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if that's true or not. My, that's a straight line. My lock. hot take is that priest should just be removed in entirely. Uh, six mana, six, six. Uh, good enough stats. It's got taunt, so anti aggro, death rattle. Anti-aggro. Yeah, this card's probably a really, really good priest card. Was priest good? Probably not. But this card's really good in priest because, again, priests have the most generic, boring cards of all time that are just like, yeah, these are good enough. So yeah, this card was probably played. Wait, sorry, how good was the card though? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this card is good. This card is like a, a very solid card, like a seven out of 10. Seven out of 10. Yeah, okay. I was, maybe I, I maybe lead them down to make it like a six or a five. Mm. It does see play, but it, it just warrants a like our particular deck, I should say. So like, for instance, there's a deck called Quest Priest, which needs a six drop. The six drop fits the void pretty nicely. It's pretty great. And if there's not a lot of lethality from hand, this card is obviously really, 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 really good because, uh, you know, your opponent has to get through and then they just can't. And then they can't kill you anymore. And then they're sad. And then that's where the priest actually comes out and says, people like, let's just ban this class. It's ridiculous. So it's probably around like a five or six. It's just an average priest card. It's like, it looks really good just because of what it does, but it's not like the best card in the deck by far. Okay. It's not even close. Not gonna lie. I kind of thought it was yes. the best card of the deck. <laughs> I can't wait for those cards. I can't wait to hear the reaction on this. What? Card. You started the game as a different class until you play a rogue. Okay. Okay. So how does this work? So you, you would queue up as rogue. 
uh, you start the game, you know, that screen that goes like mage versus warrior. Yeah. It would say like it wouldn't show rogue it would show a different class and you could also use the class's hero power if you play any card that discovers a card it would uh lean towards that class is not rogues uh basically just you are you are another class until you actually play a rogue card and this it, this is a card in your deck by the way so you will draw a two mana three two at some point okay so this card is probably terrible on ladder because uh in my opinion so the way how i look at games like hearthstone the games with like an infinite ladder system is that you only really want to play cards or decks that contribute to like an overall 51 percent win rate and if you're playing like an infinite number of games i think that this card just doesn't really contribute to anything outside of like uh yes your opponent will mulligan slightly different which is actually much more important in competitive Hearthstone, this card is probably really bad. <laughs> Otherwise, this card is great in like competitive if Rogue was ever relevant, but it was probably terrible on like ladder. All right, dude. So you're completely wrong. What? Uh, yeah. So the thing that you didn't consider whatsoever is that Rogue really likes to take opponents' class cards for a benefit of their own. So, for example, there's another card called Wild, pa Wild Paul Null, which obviously I didn't give you the context for this, so I don't I don't expect you to know this particular card. But you do know Thief Rogue existed, I'm pretty sure, because you have. I feel like you've mentioned it to me before. So the idea behind this is like you start the game as another class. You add cards to your hand that are from a different class, also known as Rogue, Rogue cards. But they count as a different class for those other cards that want that benefit. So it actually discounts your null, for instance, like for each card that you add to your hand, because it's a Rogue card still and you're a different class. So this card is actually the pivotal card in that archetype that it probably would not exist nearly as off, or it wouldn't be nearly as good if it wasn't for this card. So it's it's a cool card, and it actually is pretty great. All right. Well, well, well damn. Well, this one. Lady Prester, my beloved. Battle cry, transform me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, just how you know This is the first time you've seen this card. Hold on. Transform your deck into random, what the? Random dragons. They keep their original stats and costs. I would probably say this card is really good in a deck that probably needs like an alternate win condition or honestly Lady Presser is the win condition but yeah like Lady Presser kind of just fits a really nice role of just well the minions in your deck that are kind of dead or you use them for like combo to get to the late game like uh not combo fodder like ramp fodder to get to like the late game like it's something like druid you probably put Lady Presser in as just like a finisher and hopefully just like outvalue your opponent so yeah she's pretty good okay so this card for 99 percent of its existence was unplayable oh uh <laughs> oh, okay so <laughs> The bigger problem with this effect is that you need to draw it. Oh. If you build your deck and this card's your win condition and you don't draw it and you draw all your minions, absolute trash. Uh, it's really bad. What about this card? Smosh? Each the YouTube channel? Yeah. <laughs> Each turn, this is in your hand. Transform Anthony Padilla into a 5-5 five, five copy <laughs> of a random legendary minion. Uh, this card looks terrible. How do you look at Lady Presser and go, that card looks broken? <laughs> and then you look at this card and go, wow, it's absolute trash. Uh, okay, no. I <laughs> okay, no. Uh, let's just say the artwork <laughs> does a lot. <laughs> but also, okay, legendary minions are like really cool. Damn, who would have guessed? Uh, get, obviously, being able to like cheat them out early or like just for like five mana is like really, really good for a lot of them because most of them are like pretty high mana statted. But you could also just get like the world's worst like one mana one one legendary that like i don't know like draws a card it kind of reminds me of like camellios in the sense where you don't really like uh how do i describe it you don't want randomness to be a factor and like usually if you leave hearthstone up to like randomness more often than not unless you're like the exception being babbling book uh it's gonna be pretty bad so i'm gonna say that this card was bad uh was this card bad i don't think about bad it wasn't really played though either you're right in the fact that often random legendaries are just not super great for a game plan the problem with that is that often random legendaries are just catered to an archetype or they do a very particular thing that you have to build around like like we just saw earlier with that pure paladin legendary right yeah uh, so that's like the main problem with this card right if it was like random shaman legendary it actually probably would have been insane if this card was put into like highlander decks so you would put this in like the singleton, like the Reno type decks. Hmm. And sometimes you just get the payoff. Sometimes you just use it as a value engine. If there was like a slower archetype, you just hold this in your hand until you actually got something that you could use just to give you value. So it wasn't like horrible. It wasn't like unplayable. People did try this out. 
Now, did it actually stay in competitive decks for long? Uh, I mean, no, <laughs> it wasn't unplayable. It was a super interesting card, though. Like, it's so random that they made that. All right. Um, What about this card? Cobalt Spellkin. Battlecry. Add two one cost spells from your class to your hand. Uh, <laughs> this card looks gross. The first thing that comes to mind, which is like the worst analogy, is that this kind of reminds you of like a three mana, three five. Just like generate two spells. Okay, never mind. Just cut that out. That was, that was a terrible fucking analogy. No, leave it in. Leave it in. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, five mana. It probably saw play in like a specific kind of deck. It probably saw play in like a Highlander deck where you like you kind of just wanted more card advantage. It probably saw play in decks where you kind of just wanted big value. I think that this card is just kind of slow, but it definitely did does see some sort of play in like Highlander or some sort of like mid-range control deck, I guess. <laughs> That's my answer. This card was actually really good. Oh, wow. Uh, so the bigger thing about this card is the quality of one drops, kind of like you said. Mm. And some classes had some really good one drops. And and the, the other, like obviously you, you haven't played the game when Demon Hunter came out, but Demon Hunter's card pool was really small because obviously they didn't have those extra expansions and they didn't have like the classes set built around them. So they only had a certain density of one cost spells. So during the time when like, I think it was like the second expansion after Demon Hunter was released, this card was nuts because you were able to generate like really powerful cards. Priest had really good one drops. There was just a lot of classes that could just utilize this effect. And it turned out that a five minute three, five generate two spells is actually pretty decent. It wasn't a tempo loss necessarily. Like you weren't like falling behind. Obviously, if you're going against an aggressive deck, this card does literally nothing for you. But majority of the time when you played this card, you felt really good about it. And it saw a lot of play until it rotated. It was just a good card. Man, this dude's telling me that my Countess, that eight mana do nothing, but this five mana do nothing is good. All right, man. Well, okay, we don't have to talk about the Countess. Here. <laughs> this guy and this Countess. Oh my God. Okay, this is your very last card. All right, let's see it. Uh, this one's very picante. High Priest Ahmed, two mana, four mana, two seven. Whenever you summon a minion, set its health equal to this minions. Wow, that's not great. <laughs> okay, let's think about this. Let's think about this. Let's get, let's get the neurons firing. So <laughs> theoretically, you play this on four. Your opponent either has an answer to it and you lose the game because you did nothing on four or you win the game because your opponent didn't have an answer to it. You play a dude, you play like a Northshire cleric. Wait, it said his health? Oh, I thought it was like attack and yes. health. Okay, never mind. This card sucks. Just, just get it out of my face. This card's terrible. I don't even need to, I don't even need to look at it anymore. Um, I'm pretty sure inner, inner fire no longer exists. Uh, surely inner fire is a well-designed card. Uh, but outside of exactly inner fire decks, which have never ever been relevant in the history of man, except for like maybe a two-week period. Uh, yeah, this card looks just absolutely awful. Like it's just hell. Oh, this is gonna. I hate hell. This is great. This is this is fantastic. This card's this card was ten out of ten banger, meta defining. Bro, this card looks actually so nuts. bad. So the logic behind this card is you put this. So there was a deck called Combo Priest for when this expansion was released. Okay, so when this card was released, there was a deck that basically, like you said, used Divine Spirit, which is doubling your health, and it used Inner Fire. So you were right. That card did was like the anchor for this deck. Oh. One of the reasons why this deck was so good was because of High Priest Amit. And the reason was it because you play minions. It was like in a kind of like a mid rangey. It was called Combo Priest because you needed cards to actually win. But you would put this in like a, it was kind of like more aggressive with like a huge finisher. So you play minions. Your opponent has to answer those minions. Otherwise, you're just going to Divine Spirit in a fire kill them. And then you play Amit. And if they literally can't deal with the Amit, every one of your minions now has seven health and you just are constantly pressuring the divine spirit inner fire and this card single-handedly with divine shield inner fire or divine shield divine favor inner fire um made a deck tier one and it was the best deck for like the entire expansion it was nuts it was a ridiculously powerful card it was meta defining how the hell did herfstone ever let divine spirit <laughs> inner fire exist for this long that's my that's I, my I, main I, gripe i will tell you after that year uh, a pretty confident Divine Spirit Inner Fire rotated out. Let's go! I'm pretty confident. Finally. Because they, they made this card and they're like, hold on a second. Uh, this is pretty spicy. Now, they actually brought another card back. It's called Bless. It's literally the exact... It's like Divine Favor, Divine Spirit mixed with uh, Inner Fire, which is give your minion plus two health and set its attack equal to its health. So you just only have one card and there is a deck that actually utilizes that. But yeah, this Amit card, hella spicy, bro.
and you said it was unplayable. Bro, Un bro, it's bad. I don't want a one health <laughs> door shark. You knew what inner fire was, bro. That's even the better part. If you didn't know what those cards were, a hundred percent, I'd be like, oh, that's reasonable. Dude, but okay. <laughs> Literally every single time I have seen a shitty little <laughs> Trump SC or like Raynad like Tempo Storm highlight video of him going like double divine spirit of like him going low power and shield, power and shield, divine spirit, divine spirit, inner fire, OTK. I was this was the YouTube combo of like 2014. And like you're telling me that that YouTube combo got turned into a card dog, and they just didn't bother to remove the the, the fucking inner fire just nuclear bomb. Uh, <laughs> good good job, Hearthstone dev team. Please hire me. I will make better card design than you do. To, to be fair, I that like that combo wasn't utilized for so long. Like no one really thought of it. And then the second this card was introduced, it was like, hold on a second. Like there's actually something here, dude. That deck, like if you go look it up. Um, it was disgusting. Like it was so freaking powerful. Like you had, it was, it was like a combo deck mixed with an aggressive deck. So you were constantly in threat. Like you were always thinking you were gonna die every single turn. You have to remove every single minion, otherwise you just lose. And it was nuts. What a powerful card. It's it's so scary. I'm not. What gonna, a nuts effect. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Hearthstone dev got, team, I, you have my resume. <laughs> <laughs> I got the. Uh, I have the thumbnail ready to go, so this is perfect. Excellent. Thank <laughs> oh, you so no. much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, dude, thanks for coming. I'll be fun, like always. Thumbs up.